They call them funny cars, but what they really are are 250 mile per hour deadly serious high tech race cars. And you'll learn a lot about them from a two time world champion coming up next on the Superchargers. The Superchargers, national championship and unique motorsports events brought to you by English Leather. Wear English Leather or wear nothing at all. By your neighborhood True Value hardware stores, we've got what it takes. And by Gold Eagle, makers of fine automotive products. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Superchargers. I'm Jan Gabriel, along with a very special guest today, two-time World Funny Car Champion, Frank Hawley. Welcome to the program. Nice to be here, Jan. Frank's going to give us some real insight today into funny car racing. And a little bit later on, we're going to move on down to Darlington International Dragway for some real national championship competition. Right now, let's talk about funny cars. Let's start off, first of all, with the plastic bodies. They weigh about 175 pounds. That's right, Jan. In fact, the whole car only weighs about 2,000 pounds in this supercharged, fuel-injected, 500 cubic inch Chrysler engine makes about 2,500 horsepower, and that's what propels them to those fantastic speeds. Must be very costly. It is. It costs about $60,000 to build one of these cars, about a half a million dollars to campaign it for a year, and the cost per run in routine maintenance is about $1,000. Big bucks to go funny car racing. Let's backtrack a little bit. Let's go back to the early 60s when funny car racing began. <laughs> Funny cars all began back in the early 60s, when some of the young men from the Motor City area formed a group known as the Ram Chargers. They were quick to develop new ideas, thus beginning the evolution of the funny cars, and all leading up to the radical funny cars of today, where a yearly budget of over half a million dollars is a requirement. An 18-wheeler, complete with race car, five engines, and a crew of four is not an uncommon occurrence. At national championship events, you get a race and a car show, all in one. National Championship Funny Car Racing, big business today. It was great seeing those old photos from back in the 60s. Frank Hall, you started what, about mid-70s? Yeah, I've been racing funny cars for about 10 years now, and I've won my first NHRA World Championship in 1982, and my second one in 1983. You know, not too many of us have had the opportunity of driving a car, funny car, or any other kind of car, at 250 miles an hour in a little under six seconds, and in a quarter mile at that, that's only 1,320 feet. What's that like? It's an awesome experience, and a lot more difficult than most people would believe. We experience the same G-forces that the space shuttle astronauts do when they leave the Earth's gravity. And to be able to drive the car properly, keep it in a straight line, shift it, pull the parachutes at the proper time, and shut the motor off, while under that physical stress is a difficult task. Scary business. Recently, we went down to uh, Darlington, South Carolina, to the Darlington International Dragway for an IHRA National Championship event. Here to set the stage for you is Linda Marshall. Today, it's thunder in the Carolinas. All the big shooters of funny car racing are here. Bernstein, McEwen, Perdome, and of course, the IHRA world champion, Mark Oswald. This is a very prestigious national for them, and they all really want to win big. And secondly, thunderstorms are moving through the Darlington area, so it's going to be a race between the funny cars and the weather. The first of the eight-car quarterfinals is on the line right now. All right, Linda Marshall has set the stage for us as Frank Hawley and I review this national championship event from Darlington, South Carolina. A couple of hard chargers up there, Frank. There sure is. It's Mark Oswald, defending IHRA world champion and Pennsylvania's Roy Harris. All right, let's take a look at the national pairings right now for this eight-car quarterfinals. First up, indeed, it's Mark Oswald. He's the defending IHRA world champion. He's taking on Roy Harris. Harris is looking for his first national win ever. And next will be one of the great legends of funny car racing, Don the Snake Perdome. He'll line up against John Force. Force, of course, always a force to be reckoned with. The next twosome uh, to have at it will be Billy Meyer. He's out of Waco, Texas, and he'll try to put down six-time world champion Raymond Beetle in the Blue Max. The final pair in our eight-car showdown consists of Tom the Mongoose McEwen, a 30-year veteran of drag racing, and one of the most exciting funny car drivers today, Kenny Bernstein, the first driver ever to crack the 260-mile-per-hour barrier in a funny car. Looking at these two drivers on the line, Jan, I would consider Roy Harris the underdog. Earlier, he was asked about the conditions of the day. Uh, I think the track's just as good as it was yesterday, and our tune-up on the car is the same. The air conditions seem to be coming back around to the same. We don't have lane choice this time because we had a mechanical problem that wasn't as bad as our competitors, so we're able to come back, but we're going to go out and try it again. 
Here's a good look at Mark Oswald right now. He had a good chance of winning this event. I think Mark should feel very confident right now. He has lane choice. His car run better than did Harris's the last round of eliminations, and he's looking for a win right now. All right, well, here's how Mark Oswald assessed his chances. We're looking pretty good here. We got lane choice in the next round. The first round, we had a water line break and put water under one tire, and the car went a little sideways and hurt it, and we still ran six flats, so I think we're looking pretty good for the day. Frank, we got a little bit of psychological warfare going on at the line now. I don't think there's much with these two professional drivers. They're watching the starting line, concentrating. When the green light comes on, they leave, try and drive the car in their own lane and win the round. All right, well, Mark Oswald obviously winning this one with a 594 and a speed of 247.25. Uh, they both got off pretty well together. They certainly did. Uh, I'm surprised Roy Harris didn't have a problem on the left side of the track because some drivers have at this track. Here's the outrun. Uh, did you ever have the Chi-Town Hustler uh, not uh, lay the parachute out for you? Oh, it has happened, and believe me, it takes a lot of self-composure to stop the car with just the brakes when you know that the parachute will be can't rely on. All uh, right, now let's go back to the line. Here's John Force out of Fullerton, California, taking on uh, Don the Snake Perdome. This ought to be a dandy. It should be exciting, and uh, Don Perdome's on the left side of the track. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a factor or not. Well, we'll watch closely how the lanes develop throughout the day. Right now, we're going to go down to the shutoff area where Linda Marshall has staged herself. Mark, you won it with a 594 over Harris's 614. It was a good, clean run. How do you feel? I feel real good. It was a little loose in the middle, so if we can straighten that around, I think we can go even a little quicker. You had lane choice. You picked number two. You still think it's the best? Oh, yeah, I think so. Why? Oh, it just seems a little better in the middle of the track. You came off of a winning season. You were IHRA champion last season. Good luck to you. Thank you. Oswald seems to think he got a little out of shape. I didn't think it looked that bad, but these cars are very temperamental and the lanes can change hourly. Now, the cars have qualified very close here. We asked Perdome if that makes it become a driver's race. Well, the car is an important factor, you know. We're just, uh, we didn't seem to do very well first round, so we just got to get tuned up for the second. Well, Don Perdome certainly putting a lot of emphasis on the car. Well, the car is important, but I think in any type of auto race, the car is 50% and the driver's 50%. Prudhomme has lost the lane choice in this round. All right, earlier, John Forrest was asked what it's going to take to beat Don Prudhomme. Track seems to be excellent. We just ran a uh, 94 or 5, I think, and uh, I think we can put a little more power to her, and if Snake will stumble a little, we might get a win here. Well, John Forrest certainly sounding like he's waiting for Prudhomme to make a mistake. I wouldn't want to have to count on a Don Perdome mistake for me to win this drag race. All right, both of them on the Christmas tree. They get off the line pretty good together. They certainly do. Prudhomme has problems here with the spin of the tires, but that's where you notice a good driver and a bad driver. Prudhomme overcame the problem with his driving expertise and won the drag race. Indeed he did. Of course, that'll put him in the semifinals, and we'll be back with more on the Superchargers. Back on the Superchargers, I'm Jan Gabriel along with Frank Hawley, two-time world champion funny car driver. Frank, right now we're looking at the quarterfinals. Here's Raymond Beetle coming out. Beetle, of course, has won 31 major titles. He's a six-time world driving champion. And Jan, Raymond Beetle is going to be racing 29-year-old Billy Meyer from Waco, Texas. It's interesting that the first car Billy Meyer ever drag raced was a fuel funny car just like this one. Competition here in the quarterfinals is very close, and earlier Raymond Beetle was asked, with the closeness of the competition, is it now up to Lady Luck? I think pretty well. This is going to be a driver's race today because all the cars are run running so consistent. The low was a 592, and the slowest car is about a 605. So I think going into the final, unless we step up and run like some 580s or something, it's all the cars are run within four five hundreds. But it's going to be pretty close. Well, Raymond Beetle thinks it's going to be a close call here at Darlington, while Billy Meyer, on the other hand, is concerned about running against the Blue Max car. Blue Max car is always a tough car to beat. Uh, they have been uh, steadily sneaking up on the car here, and it looks like uh, it should be a heck of a race. We ran 592 the first round, and they ran 594. So it looks like the advantage uh, will be uh, with me with the lane choice, I hope. <laughs> Billy Meyer sounds concerned. Raymond Beetle says it's going to be a close one. I'm going to have to go with Billy Meyer in the right lane. That left lane's going to bite you sooner or later. You look at Raymond Beetle right there, the car spins the tires, it gets out of the black area, the groove where all the good traction is. His car slows down and Billy Meyer wins it with a not very impressive 614. 
All right, so Billy Meyer at least gets himself into the semifinals coming up just a little bit later on. Another one of the big concerns at Darlington was the weather. The storm clouds continued to move in throughout the day. I know the crowds were uh, watching with great concern. Right now, let's go to Linda Marshall, who picks up on Billy Meyer down at the end run. Bill, you had lane choice, you picked number two, but your ET wasn't as good as in the first round. Did you back off a little bit? No, we heard a motor first round, and we had to change motors, and that motor ran on seven cylinders, so uh, it just happens that way sometimes. Did the fact that Beetle got a little squirrely, a little loose in the middle, uh, have any effect on your race? No, I never did see him, uh, so I, I don't really know what he did. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, there's the obvious reason for Billy Meyer's high ET. Exactly. What happened is on the starting line, one of Billy Meyer's spark plugs misfired. It misfired down the entire race course, and the result was a 614 ET. All right, two big shooters now, Tom the Mongoose McEwen and Kenny Bernstein. After the qualifying rounds, Bernstein was really concerned about that left lane. The only advantage that I think we might have is that we ran 588 yesterday in the left lane. Hopefully this car likes the left lane, otherwise we're in a world of trouble. Is Kenny Bernstein in a world of trouble? He might be. We've seen a lot of cars have problems on that left side, and what Kenny Bernstein did yesterday may not matter right now. All right, let's find out what Tom McEwen has to say. Well, you know, we've been in heavy rain here, and they had to wait to delay the program, and it started a little bit late, but it seems okay. The air's a little heavy right now, which riches up the engines. Track seems fine. Uh, we're getting ready to race Bernstein. We had low elapsed time of the first round at 590. We run him. We got lane choice, and I don't know if that'll make any difference or not. We're just going to look at our motor and go up there and see if we can't run another 590 against Bernstein. Now there's a confident man. He should be. He had low ET in the first round, like he said, and he does have lane choice. I think that the left lane is a culprit here again. You can see Kenny Bernstein about two or 300 feet down the course, loses traction, the car gets sideways, and once again, Tom McEwen is the winner in the right lane. A good ET, 587. Absolutely, a fantastic elapsed time in that right lane. 587, he had some piston smoke. That means that they're going to have to repair the engine. No problem. All right, well, as you can see, the clouds were starting to move in over Darlington. Here's some pro stockers moving out now as the funny cars get ready for the semi round. Pretty popular little division these days. Probably one of the fastest growing categories of professional drag racing. They have stock body automobiles and they run 180 miles an hour. And unfortunately, the pro stockers also brought the reins. As you can see, the uh, the fans started heading for cover as the reins came down over the Darlington International Dragway. You can see the uh, the puddles there as the uh, reins kept coming down. They brought out all the uh, track equipment they could find to uh, get rid of that rain, but unfortunately, it was to end the day. And of course, that would force them into another day, which could set up a whole new set of circumstances. Now, Frank, here we have the drivers. They're all pumped up. They've made the semifinals. It rains. They've got a layover for a day. What's it do psychologically? Well, personally speaking, that bothers me a lot. You're on an emotional high for race day, and then the rains come and it stops. You have to go back to the motel, sleep a night, and get up first thing in the morning ready and prepared to go out and do battle once again. Well, on the second day, you found everybody ready for the semifinals. Uh, doing a little maintenance, I would imagine. Yeah, they're doing routine maintenance after the race yesterday. And what they'll be doing is uh, adjusting the fuel systems, the clutches, uh, getting the car set up for the atmospheric conditions and the temperature changes for today. All right, that was Oswald and Perdome's pit area. The semifinals were on the line with Tom the Mongoose McEwen in lane number two. And Billy Meyer was in that infamous lane number one from the day before. I think that uh, Tom McEwen's uh, again going to have an advantage being in that right lane. Well, let's find out what he had to say about it. No, I think we'll be okay. The, the air is a lot better today than it has been. It's going to change the tuning of these engines. They'll be a lot leaner. As long as the drag strip bite is okay, everything will be fine. Uh, and uh, momentum-wise, I don't think we'll lose what we had going for yesterday. All, we just need a little lady luck. Keep going with us. We'll be fine. Well, Tom McEwen sounds like he's still on a roll from the day before. I don't think Tom's lost any momentum at all. And once again, he's in the right side of that track, and I think that's still going to be a factor. All right, Billy Meyer, he's the one who has to sweat it out. Let's see what he had to say about the layover. Well, sometimes it, uh, it can work either way. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, being as we don't have lane choice, uh, I think it's to a, a great advantage to us because the sun's out today, and our lane should be a lot better now that it's uh, cleared up. Sounds like some wishful thinking from Billy Meyer. Well, I think Billy Meyer's going to need a break because once again, that left lane has given some people problems. Although he seems to have a good drag race going here with Tom McEwen. It's a very close race, but Tom McEwen 
runs another 5.89 second run, and if he continues to run in the 5.8 second range, he might be the new champion. In case you just joined us here on the Superchargers, we're watching a semi and final IHRA Funny Car Showdown from Darlington International Dragway. It's a Monday morning, 8 a.m., following a Sunday afternoon rainout, and Don Perdome was asked if the layover was an advantage or a disadvantage for him. Well, we'd like to think it's an advantage. Uh, we'll have to see, but uh, the car uh, wasn't performing well, and we made a few adjustments, and therefore the low ET car, which was McEwen, um, it, it stopped his momentum. So we'll, he has to think about the problems of today, and we just have to think about running a little quicker. Sounds like Perdome's still looking for more power. Well, that could be good or bad for him. Drag racing is a traction contest, and too much power might cause him to lose the round. Let's see what Mark Oswald had to say. We got a little a bit of a break with the weather because we lost lane choice in the final round. The left lane doesn't seem to be quite as good, and we'd end up running it uh, late in the evening in the left side. And I think running on the left side during the heat of the day is a little bit of an advantage. So it's IHRA world champion Mark Oswald in lane number one, Don Perdome in lane number two. I'm going to have to go with Don Perdome on this one. He has lane choice, and he's on a hot streak this weekend. Look good coming off the line. It is. Both drivers have traction problems about 300 feet down the course. Mark Oswald pulls ahead, and then Don Perdome catches him right at the finish line. A very close race. All right, so it'll be Perdome and Tom McEwen, an old rivalry in the finals just a little bit later on. Right now, we're going to take a look at the Pro Stock Finals. This is between Lee Shepard, who's the defending IHRA Pro Stock champion, and Darrell Alderman out of Moorhead, Kentucky. These cars are extremely exciting to watch. The carbureted gasoline-powered automobiles, much like drive on the street today, and they run incredibly over 180 miles per hour. Here's Darrell Alderman. Looks like he shuts down, and Lee Shepard's going to win it with an ET of 7.49, a speed of 184.42 miles an hour. Right now, here's Linda Marshall. Here in McEwen's pit, they've taken the engine completely apart. They found that none of the pistons were burned, the engine's in good shape, and as soon as it's back together again, he'll be ready for Perdome. Over in Perdome's pit, they're replacing a fuel pump. He's looking for more power to improve his ET. Well, that was the scenario for the finals. Everything well in McEwen's pit, Perdome changing a fuel pump. What's the significance there? The fuel system is what's very important on these nitro-burning engines, and the fuel pump is the heart of that system. The engine is just a giant fuel and air factory, and the change in the fuel pump for Don Perdome could give him additional horsepower in order to win the final round. All right, there you have it. We'll find out in just a few minutes who is going to be our national champion. Right now, let's go to Linda Marshall with a very special interview. This is Lee Shepard, our national winner here. Lee, first of all, I want to congratulate you on setting a new world record here yesterday. Well, thank you. Uh, everything went good for us this weekend. The car ran well and the conditions were good and uh, everything just worked out real good. Which do you think was really the better of the two, the car or the conditions? Well, the car is running better. We have a new motor and it's making a lot of horsepower. Uh, we were running about a tenth quicker than most of the other cars in the field. Of course, the track stayed real good this weekend for our car. We had no traction problems. Uh, so it was kind of a combination of both of them. They're on the line for the Funny Car Finals. Here's where the big money's at. Don Perdome in lane number one, Tom McEwen in lane number two. If you go back in history about 25 years, these two have been doing battle on the nation's drag strips for what seems like forever. And if you look at the win-loss column, Don Perdome definitely has the advantage. Let's talk about these uh, smoky burnouts for a moment. How important are they? They're very important. What you want to do is spin the tire so you heat the tire, put hot, sticky rubber on the ground, and that rubber against rubber is the best traction possible. Okay, the two of them now, are they psyching each other out at all? I think that what they're doing is they're letting their motors get up the temperature, being very careful to make sure all the levers are in their proper position, staging the car exactly in the right spot on the starting line, and concentrating on making the run. They're off the starting line, Don Perdome smokes the tires immediately, he loses and shuts down, and Tom McEwen is the champion. All right, McEwen wins it with a 591. He was consistent all weekend long, so we can chalk one up for McEwen, and we'll be back in just a moment. As we've just seen Tom the Mongoose McEwen put down his arch rival, Don the Snake Perdome. Frank Hawley, anything unique about this event? Well, they had to race an extra day because of the rain, and that's always a factor. All right. Right now, here's Linda Marshall with Tom McEwen. 
Tom, last year on the Superchargers, when it was down to the A-Car Showdown, you predicted for us that it would be you and Prudhomme in the finals. It was, but he beat you. This year, it was the same situation. Just yesterday, you predicted for us again that it would be you and Prudhomme in that final classic showdown. It was, and you turned out the winner this year. Well, you know what happens. Uh, we've been racing for, I've been, this is my 31st year, and he and I have been racing for about 20 against each other. That's where that mongoose and snake thing came from. We've had races like this all the time. It's probably the best rivalry in the sport, and it, it'll be going on all year. It just depends on if it's your weekend. This, we, we ran real consistent all weekend, real good. He, had, he ran good, and then he had trouble with the tires smoking, and it just turned out to be our day. And so week in and week out, this goes like this, and hopefully this year uh, we'll have the edge and get the championship. Well, right now, I'd certainly like to take this opportunity to thank Frank Hawley, two-time world funny car champion, for giving us a tremendous amount of information and insight into the world of funny car racing. What direction is the sport headed? It's going up. In the last 10 years, the amount of media and corporate involvement in the sport has increased tremendously. And I can see that in the late 1980s, drag racing is going to have an even more prominent position in the world of auto racing. All right. Frank Hawley, driver of that world-famous car, the Chi-Town Hustler. By the way, I want to thank Rick Kraft, for letting us use his super funny car here today. I'm Jan Gabriel. We'll look forward to seeing you next time on The Superchargers. The Superchargers, brought to you by English Leather and True Value Hardware Stores. Promotional fees paid by Harley-Davidson, who invites you to test drive the new Harleys at your participating Harley-Davidson dealer. See all the models. The new Harleys, ride one. Gold Eagle, makers of fine automotive products, including air and repair tire inflator, seals punctures so you won't be left flat. Play School, makers of SST supersized trucks, Bigfoot, Black Gold, Orange Blossom Special, the SST line from Play School. Incredible.